Hi there, and welcome to a very special episode of ZDNet's DIY IT 3D Printing Discovery Series. In this episode, we're going to talk about if you can do PowerPoint, you can do 3D design. And if you look on the screen here, you can see that I have PowerPoint open in one window, and I have a 3D design program called 123D Design from Autodesk open in the other. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the similarities between the two of these. I am using uh, the Max version of PowerPoint from uh, the latest release of Office, but the same capabilities exist in Windows. Uh, if you use the old version of, of Max PowerPoint, I, all bets are off because that was, that was pretty rough. But let's just start with this, and, and I'm going to just show you some of the basic capabilities that we do in PowerPoint that you can see pretty much in um, in 123D design. So let's start by adding a new slide. I'm going to make a blank slide over here. And let's select some shapes to insert. So many of these are things that you've seen before. Uh, we'll go up to the PowerPoint menu and we'll select a shape. And I'll just drop a square there. And I'll insert again and I'll select a shape. And this time I will draw a circle. So none of this is particularly startling. But let's flip over to 123D Design. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, you can use other 3D design programs. This happens to be the one I'm using, uh, in part because I saw a lot of, of really good YouTube demos that used it. And so I thought, OK, I'll try it. And it's, it's pretty good. So uh, that's why I'm using this. So if you recall, we just created a square and a circle. So let's create a, two, a, a box, a cube and a cylinder. And as you can see, the similarity, you go up to insert and you find a shape and pick a shape. Or you go here, you find a shape and pick a shape. They are very similar. So the next thing I want to show you is um, resizing. Now, resizing is a little bit more intuitive in um, PowerPoint than it is in 123D Design, but it's pretty straightforward. You click on an object and you drag a corner or part of a corner, and you can resize. So let's do that here. In this case, I'll click on an object. Now I'm going to come down to Smart Scale, and in Smart Scale, you can do a couple things. You can grab one of these handles and do exactly what I just did before, except doing it in 3D space. So I think that's the handle. The handle's a little tough to get a hold of in the third dimension, but you can sort of see how that works. Now you can resize something. Let's take the corner here and bring it back. You can also give it exact dimensions. And we'll do the same thing. Let's save it. And we'll do the same thing here, except in this case, we'll make it 40 and 40. And you can see we can do it that way. Or we can come in here and resize very similarly to what we did and just drag and move it along. Now, what you can see here is that this is now a little bit below the surface if we come down. So you're seeing a little bit of a difference, but that's okay. We're going to make use of that in a little bit. So we've looked at sizing things are similar. So let's look at grouping. Let's take these two objects, put one on top of the other, and I am in... PowerPoint going to change the line because I want you to see some stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this, come to Shape Format, uh, and take the line, make it a bit heavier, and make it black. And I'm going to do the same here, make it heavier. And black and the reason is is that way you can see when one thing overlay overlays the other it's a little easier to tell so I can take these things if I move one at a time they move as one as separate units I can shift select I'm holding the shift key down I can move the two together but they're still separate units if I click outside I can move them or I can take these two units and I can come up to I think this is the group menu and I can group it in PowerPoint and now they are treated as one unit Likewise, in 123D Design, I'm trying to tell it to move the table. There we go. 
I can take two objects. I'm holding the shift key together, and as you can see, I'm moving them together. I can take one object, move it on top of the other, and you can see, let's slide that down a little bit. There's a little bit more motion because we're looking at presentation, but you can see they're together. But I can move one separately from the other, or I can take the two of them, I can come up here to the group menu, and I can group them together. And now when I grab it, as you can see, it's selecting the entire thing. So we have grouping uh, that's very similar to what we're used to. Um, we also have alignment. So let's take these two objects, let's ungroup them, and let's make them, let's make the, the rectangle a little bigger and select them together and then we can align them. So we want to align them, align center one way and we want to align middle the other way and we now have an aligned object. Likewise, we can come here. Let's do the same thing. Let's ungroup them. So now they're separate. Whoops. Let's ungroup. There we go. Now they're separate objects. And let's do the same thing. I'm going to select the two of them. Now, align in 123D design is the A key. So I'll press the A key. And we'll align that in the center. And we'll we want to get that center. We'll align that in the center. And as you can see, we now have the objects are aligned. And in fact, I can take this thing. I'll take the face here and extrude it up a little bit just so you can see it. There we go. And as you can see, it's now aligned. So we have alignment in PowerPoint. And do the same thing again, make it a little bigger. Come in here. Uh, let's see, I'm not in the format menu, but come here and align center again. And as you can see, we have pretty much the same approach. So now the next thing that I want to look at is the concept of merging shapes and subtracting shapes. And for this purpose, I'm going to duplicate uh, the cylinder and paste it. And it's a copy paste and I'm sliding it over. In PowerPoint, I'm just simply going to copy and paste it and slide it over. Um, now let's talk about how what happens when we merge a shape. So if I take um, the circle and I take the square. Let's take this circle out of here for the moment. We'll come back to it in a minute so it's clear. I'm going to take this circle and this square. I'm going to click the two, go to Shape Format, come up here and say Union, which is merging the two shapes. Now pay attention to the outline because the outline also can have all sorts of interesting effects, but pay attention to that outline because once we merge them, the outline wraps around the whole thing and this becomes one monolithic shape. The same thing can happen here. Once again, I'm going to take, oops, take this thing out of here and let's see, we put it in the corner. So let's take this guy and bring him and put him in the corner like so. Now it won't be exactly the same because as you can see, there's a height difference. So um, let's see what the height of this thing is. This thing is 29 millimeters high. So let's match those just so that you can kind of see how this comes together. Let's make that 29 millimeters high as well. And let's bring this up so that they're equal. As you can see from the top, they're on they're aligned to the top. And let's move this up a little bit. They're also aligned on the bottom. So I'm going to take this object and this object, come up to this menu, and I'm going to say Merge. I'm going to click one mesh, the other mesh, which are the two objects, and I'm going to hit Enter. And there you go. You can see that they are, again, exactly the same as when we did it here. So if you can do it in Photoshop, you can do it in 123Design. Now I'm going to do one with a much bigger piece, and I'm going to merge it just so you can see what happens when we merge an object that is larger. First off, if I merge, I'm now merging this combined object with this. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say merge. It's gonna ask me to choose one and then the other. I'm gonna hit enter 
and now they are merged. They are actually one piece. The difference is that you, you see the lines and the borders because you may want to be able to work with these edges and do something interesting. But still, it's basically the same function. Let's go back to Photoshop. Now let's do something called subtract. Subtract is extremely powerful in uh, one, two, three D design, and I've used it a lot in Photoshop as well. So again, I'm gonna copy and paste. This time I'm gonna bring the circle into the middle. I'm gonna select the two, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna shape format, shape format, and then I'm gonna select the middle piece and subtract. And now you can see that I've pulled out the center from this object. Likewise, I'm gonna come in here, copy and paste again, because I might wanna use that for something else. Let's bring it down a little bit on the screen so you can see it a little better, okay? And this time I'm gonna come up to the combine menu and subtract from this, subtract that, let's see. Uh, that's going to be kind of interesting. Notice it's not in the middle. I'm going to actually cancel out of that, so I'm going to hit escape. Let's move this down so it's actually in the center. Okay, so now it's in the center. And as you can see, it pops out the top and it pops out the bottom. So let's do this combine again. This time I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select that. Uh, I don't think I got it right. Let's try again. Subtract from this that. And as you can see, we now have a very nice hole. And it's this hole that the subtract capability becomes really interesting because I've used the subtract to kind of eat away at parts of a 3D design. Like let's say I wanted to chop off, I want to create a little bit of a path coming into here. I will again do, actually I'm gonna copy this again just in case I want it for something. I'll come back up to subtract. I'll click the first one click the second one, hit enter, and as you can see, I've now chopped a really nice hole in. And I like that a lot. I like being able to chew away at whatever I'm working with um, by using subtract. So I can, if I wanted to, let's just say I wanted to take it up a little bit. Let's say I wanted to make that a sort of white, let's bring it down here. I wanted to make it an interestingly whiter shape. So again, I'll come up here, select one, select the other, hit enter, and as you can see, it starts to chew away. And that subtract capability is really, really excellent, especially if you're gonna start combining pre-existing designs. Uh, let's do one other capability, which is pretty simple, but you may not know you can do it in a 3D design program. Let's, collect, let's select an object and give it a different color. Let's select an object and give it a different color. So I've got an orange and a green there. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna select material, and let's make that kind of an orange. And let's select that and material and make that kind of a green. We'll make it a little bit of a darker green. There you go. So we can change the colors of objects and that becomes really useful when you're starting to combine things and you wanna see how they fit together and what piece is what piece and so forth. And then I'm gonna show you one trick that's not in PowerPoint, which I think is kind of cool, and that is the hollow out function. And the hollow out function is hidden somewhere under the toolbar. It's in here. And it doesn't look like a hollow out, but it is. I'm going to take this, and I believe we select shell. I'll come back to this guy, and I'll say hollow out. There we go. And let's say we want it, we don't want it really super thick. So there we go. And as you can see, even though it gave an error, there is now a hollow shape, which if we look at the bottom, actually just pull this up, up. If we look at the bottom of the object, you can see it's solid, but it's been hollowed out. And that's kind of cool. I like that as a feature. So there are lots of additional features you can pick up and learn, but Keep in mind that if you are moderately comfortable doing very basic PowerPoint capabilities, you might have to find which button does the same thing, but they're essentially the same kind of tool that you can do in, uh, in, in 1, 2, 3D design.
And that is all for today. Thank you very much, folks, and tune in next week for more of ZDNet's 3D printing discovery series. My name is David Gortz, and if you make something cool, let me know.